Its greatness was in the small, its achievement in its humility. This program is brought to you by Freekeen.com. They called him Silent Bob. Now, I regret to acknowledge his silence has become permanent. Representative Robert Hull of Grafton, New Hampshire, acquired that honorific only with the greatest persistence and dedication to the furtherance of human freedom in our happy yet overgoverned region. The very location from which his silence exuberated <clears throat> was itself a matter of import. In the year of our Lord, 2003, the studies had been undertaken to determine the following. If New Hampshire was the least unfree state in this nanny empire, then which town within it was the least unfree? This research quickly settled on Grafton, one of the few American towns to lack zoning. Its police force of sometimes one, sometimes two, was less odious than most and not anxious for conflict with philosophical opponents. And the town was home to New Hampshire's libertarian gubernatorial candidate, Mr. Babiars. Members of an organization known as the Free Town Project, an offshoot of sorts to the Free State Project and its libertarian migration, began urging freedom-loving persons to relocate there, perhaps the freest town in the freest state. Bob Hall, temporarily and unhappily marooned in another eastern police state, wasted little time in accepting and undertaking this mission, reportedly becoming the largest landholder in Grafton, then relocating there. Renting out tolerant access to his own home, as well as one or more quaint and rural farmhouses. Many freedom lovers, including myself, made good use of these humble but enjoyable facilities. Over the years, perhaps 40 incoming liberty activists, known here as Free Staters, made Grafton their home. Though not always decisive, uh, this was a force to be reckoned with in a town of under 1,500s in population. Almost before their arrival, the so-called Free Towners became the source of much fearful but sometimes understandable uh, clucking amongst the local authoritarian faction. A tense and well-attended town meeting was organized uh, that very first year, to which uh, the photographic <laughs> a photogenic anarchist Ms. Phillips, then president of the Free State Project, traveled and presented our case. Insults were exchanged, statewide publicity was effected, and hundreds of new signers flocked to join the Free State Project from around the nation as a result. One moment. KBO. KBO. Winston will be back. <clears throat> oh, bugger. Uh, Mr. Phillips, the president of the uh, yeah, yeah. Insults were exchanged. Statewide publicity was affected in hundreds of years. Oh, I already said that. Already said, uh, my apologies. K uh, KBO. KBO. Um, perhaps uh, mm, around the nation is a real. Perhaps more importantly, some Grafton residents. Suspicious of the monopoly institutions which misgovern even uh, the freest locales, found themselves in approval of the endeavor, and bonds began to form, of which I am happy to have eventually been a part. Grafton became the scene of small festivals, its new immigrants, too small in number to fulfill the dire apprehension, <laughs> too, too small in number to fulfill the dire apprehensions prophesied uh, by the minions of bureaucracy, and nevertheless out, uh, set about cleaning government properties, videotaping uncomfortable officials, ejecting perhaps two from their civic portfolios, descending upon town meetings, and running for office. 
One verbal duel with federal employees, uh, filmed by myself, after I relocated to Grafton, appeared on uh, the network uh, known as CNN. A marijuana raid was undertaken, uh, directed against a friend of the Freetown Endeavor, who had long resided in Grafton and was, if memory serves, happily disconnected uh, from its electricity. Activists descended upon the scene. The prosecution was resisted in the courts, brought to a respectable conclusion, and the friend of Silent Bob, who we christened Solar Power Bob, was returned to us with relative haste, his honor and duty of constructive defiance unsullied. Mm. One moment. One moment. Carry on. Carry on. Oh, very well, very well. Yes, very well. Good. All's good. Well, uh, the photographic apparatus is continuing to function. Ah, uh, the silent bob by christened uh, solar power unsolid historic... Ah, uh, yes. Uh, serious. This is a serious matter, actually. Uh, a, a historic church, uh, which no one else would buy, was purchased in the main town square, its owner a free stater. There... Still more exuberant gatherings ensued. The building became a platform of anti-war musings and monuments to the victims of nation-state. Though uh, functioning as a public facility and place of ecumenical worship, it became uh, the target of taxation. Then, mysteriously, burned. The building survived. Its owner, Mr. Cannell, did not. Mystery deepened and was never unraveled. Sober and mortal contemplations descended upon the scene, but emigrations continued. Through it all, silent Bob remained steadfast above, true to his name, benevolent, accepting, but rarely vocal. His many runs for office culminated in many disappointments until his day arrived and he became Grafton's state representative. There he efforted a change in statute, aiming to protect uh, me and others like me from the cruel retaliations which are everywhere possible when we endeavor to video record operatives of state. He did, we may be sure, many other things, of which we know little, for it was not his way to self-congratulate. After he left us in 2019, a memorial service was undertaken at the center of his adopted and now beloved hometown. A friend remarked that it was the type of ceremony he would have wished to avoid in life. But now... He was in an urn and could be easily compelled to attend. So comes to its conclusion uh, the unremarkable story of an unassuming man who was nevertheless part of a singular and most helpful endeavor. Its greatness was in the small, its achievement in its humility, cunning by its very simplicity. Its greatness was in the small, its achievement in its humility. The scheme was crowned with more successes uh, than other libertarian uh, endeavors because it relied on one simple expedient. Location. Simply designate a locale where relative freedom survives and can be deepened if you are in the least unfree part of the least unfree place. It may be postulated the number of things which can go wrong is proportionally reduced, with the shining potential uh, dramatically increased. I will miss Representative Silent Bob, although I saw him rarely, and heard him more rarely still. In this, I am not alone, and he is not forgotten. Mr. Draper, as in uh, uh, Mr. Tim Draper, I uh, 
Yeah, one moment. Uh, you have asked, and asked many times, quote, is this person going to dedicate their life to make something extraordinary happen? Unquote. Well, um, uh, this person uh, does not know what will happen precisely, uh, uh, but he does know uh, that he is part of something extraordinary, uh, something you are missing. He addresses you from the prodigious forests of the free state, uh, thus far only relatively so, uh, but uh, still the locale of a fruitful experiment, and now fifteen years unfolded, and unrivaled anywhere in the known universe. New Hampshire has been the scene of a pro-freedom political migration uh, reminiscent of the, the anti-federal or Mormonist flight to Utah or the anti-communist evacuation of Cubans out of Florida. Over two thousands of us have moved here where uh, only perhaps five thousands of political activists pre-existed uh, the playing field uh, thus partially leveled our migrants have won and currently hold roughly 15 seats in the legislature. New Hampshire's Republican Governor Benson has joined our ranks while he was in office. A congressman Paul, during his presidential crusade uh, proclaimed on YouTube that he is a friend of the Free State Project. The genius of this endeavor is in the small and in the wise choice of location. New Hampshire, uh, currently ranked by Cato as America's uh, second freest state, while California shows as uh, uh, eighth most authoritarian at best, evidence is a system of uh, dispersed powers, of easy access, of no general income or sales tax. Uh, how um, her, her low population makes her influenceable even by the common man. I myself, with perhaps twelve dozens of hours labor and no expense, have caused a, a lasting spending cap to be imposed on the government of our largest city, uh, Manchester. Now, this was achieved only in concert with, with others more senior, uh, but my effort, uh, the gatherance of fourteen hundred signatures, uh, did make the difference between uh, success and loss. Now, you have said, mm, uh, you seek the extraordinary, but uh, uh, let, us, uh, let us turn the query back upon you. Mm, uh, the, in the arena of political change against the entrenched California systemics, do you feel uh, you have yet accomplished the extraordinary? Uh, should you argue that the answer is yes, I would counter that uh, unless I am missing something. It is, in fact, uh, mm, it is, in fact, only partially yes. You have, uh, uh, you have, uh, one moment, um, remain, remain affixed, remain affixed. Um, mm, mm. Uh, you, have, you have seen how it is possible with great expenditures uh, to push forward reasonable proposal, uh, an impressive distance, only to witness it vetoed by the near unremovable anointed. Uh, this is the nature of large principalities, uh, such as the one which currently rules you. Their organization needs you more than you need it. Uh, but it is... Um, but it, but, it, but it will remain a threat to you, perhaps personally, for as long as you remain within its jurisdiction. At least you are still allowed uh, the privilege of leaving. One moment. KBO. KBO. Oh, yes, look at the, the apparatus. How much more promising? How much more promising than California uh, are, are these, uh, these are the ravishing, glowing green hills um, of our privileged uh, province, arguably the safest in the nation? Here, you would have more than what... Uh, you, you would be more uh, than what you are now. A great wave uh, battering magnificently, uh, but unsuccessfully, against the great iron castle 
of your ungovernable yet overgoverned region. Here you might not be the tail that wags the tiger, or you might be uh, the tiger. What if a piece uh, of that uh, a great valley of silicon, uh, uh, so long uh, addled and overlorded by the ruinous impositions of state nanomanagement and confiscatory taxation, uh, were to escape, as the great industrialists of Randian fiction did, and join with us in this uncompleted but real gulch gulch. Your Bitcoin brother, Mr. Finton, has now made the relocationary transition here, and I am told is launching a center of novel industry. If we here, with little more than our bootstraps to pull upon, could conquer the obstacles we have conquered, and you there could come within an ace of placing your great schemes into a much less reachable uh, arena. Imagine what you could do here, and what we could do together. Winchester, New Hampshire, uh, April 29th, 2019. Uh, how does one compose a eulogy for figures unknown to the composer? Uh, figures hated and lampooned in their very hour of cessation, condemned uh, to classifications almost devoid of, of public respect, or even uh, the recognition of their sentient rights. Defiant, yet unable to maintain their resistance, allegedly unwilling in the end to even carry on their living, there is now a little that can be done for the dead. But we do have uh, uh, the, the capacity of asking questions. Uh, asking questions others have not asked. Or which have been uh, prematurely assumed to have been uh, answered. Uh, but have not been answered. Uh, most importantly, who were the aggressors? We know that on the evening of Wednesday, March 27th, 2019, uh, one month ago, uh, as of this reading, three allegedly disobedient citizens were reported by police uh, to be in a motel, a motel room at the Quality Inn, uh, just across the interstate from Manchester's Mall of New Hampshire. Uh, the young adult, uh, Brandy Tarantino, Stephen Marshall of Middle Age, Christian Sancier, 26, never to see, 27, and whom I fear may also suffer a, a regretted guessworkish mispronunciation of his name, for which I apologize, if it is occurring. Police uh, have claimed, and we have no reason to doubt, uh, that one or more uh, government charges or warrants uh, stood against them uh, for the alleged uh, misuses of substances controlled by parliamentary or regulatory uh, forbiddance, and that the local uh, media has reported all of them devoid or nearly devoid of violent criminal record. A local lapdog pressman has referred to Mr. Marshall in writing as a known criminal as though uh, that were an exceptional characteristic uh, in this empire of, of a hundred thousand forbidden acts. Uh, but, by and large, the reporters have done a respectable job of sticking to fact, uh, fact without uh, uh, prostrating themselves, unusually before police accounts. Questioning some official actions and drawing lines for those who wish to perceive them between victimed and victimless offense. We are told by institutions with perhaps very literal dogs in the fight uh, that there was uh, a wanted check upon Mr. Marshall, a uh, hardened looking 50 something. His motel was then approached by agents of the Federal uh, Drug Enforcement Agency and Manchester Police. Press reports have admirably noted an apparent lack 
not only of violent offenses, but also of thieving or other such victimful charges, or at least convictions, on Mr. Mar Mr. Marshall's part. Uh, if there were any of the latter, uh, 15 minutes of start paging, roughly two weeks after his killing, has failed to produce any indications. Uh, this is significant, for it has allowed us to at least uh, form opinions regarding the all-important but underreported, perhaps even unreported, question, uh, who is the initiator of this conflict? The mainstream press reports tell us that the police approached Marshall, uh, that is, uh, that, uh, that it was him they were hunting, that his crime was without a damaged party, and, though it is possible we are missing something, it seems all his previous convictions uh, and charges were victimless, primarily drug possession and failures to appear. Of course, uh, some will say, uh, that makes him the guilty creature, uh, for we know uh, that it is a wonderful thing the police are doing, using uh, electrical shocks and uh, batons, and now bullet cavities and caskets to carry on their glorious work of stopping people uh, from putting things in their own bodies or even from having them in their own pockets. Uh, but that is, uh, that is the thought method of the Stockholm Syndromist, sympathizing with their overseers, uh, though subject... Uh, even as bystanders, to its misbehaviors. Uh, apparently unwilling to conform themselves to these psychological limitations, or history, uh, to, these, to these psychological uh, limitations, or histrionics, uh, the remaining resistors, Tarantino and San Seer, allegedly maintained a brief defense of the territory to which they had apparently been welcomed, They had apparently been welcomed. Uh, great apologizings must ensue. Winston has lost his place. Winston will be back. Remain affixed. Yeah. Uh, Will check the apparatus as long as I am, uh, as long as I am uh, becalmed. Mm, it appears to be functioning. All appears to be well, except for my own state of uncertainty, for which I uh, again uh, offer my apologies. Um, <clears throat> But the, that is the method of Stockholm Syndrome is apparently unwilling to conform themselves to psychological limitations Jibs of we're going to find. Um, a Tarantino and San Sierra allegedly maintained a brief defense of the territory uh, to which they had apparently been uh, welcomed, uh, then accosted by outsiders. Subsequently, they were found dead upon the storming of the accommodation of the three only Mr. Sancier had a reported previous government record of violent crime, a simple assault, as reported by the Laconia Daily Sun, but not independently confirmed. He had also, according to the Sun, a charge of, uh, of theft from a vehicle. Ms. Tarantino is reported to have arrests for criminal trespassing, reckless operation of a motor vehicle, and theft by deception each rateable or potentially rateable as aggressive acts, if uh, truly committed. All three must answer to whatever power they now face if they unnecessarily risked bystander lives with their own gunplay. But so too must police. Uh, it is common in, uh, in great dramatic events, as, as these are by New Hampshire standards, to dwell only upon the targets of the action. Milosevic in 1999, Noriega ten years previous, and the undeniable wickedness of each man, as well as the many who have fallen in front of this empire before and since. 
But what is so oft forgotten is the fate of the unoffending uh, passerby, accidentally or intentionally exploded, purposefully or haphazardly separated from their ownings uh, by the unaccountable hand of monopoly government. We may be grateful that only uh, the latter appears to have befallen uh, the randomly present motel guests. Even if a deed is exception, uh, uh, even if a deed is execution worthy, as those of these three guests were not, it must not be revenged upon those who did not commit it. And the many travelling guests, random, who had come to Manchester's Quality Inn with expectation of rest, uh, but uh, then became suddenly ejected en masse by government gunmen from their overnight abodes, uh, well, they, they, uh, they certainly did not commit it. Channel 9 reports uh, that they were separated from their possessions and even forbidden from their own vehicles uh, for many hours after the siege had completed and all the rebellious participants in it had become ghosts. Then, on the day following, uh, representatives of New Hampshire's Attorney General made the, uh, the astonishing admission that it might still be several more days before these uh, uh, b uh, several more <clears throat> several more um, days days it was several more days before these uh, unaccustomed um, these, these unaccused in many cases out of town bystanders would even be allowed to gather their belongings uh, and many uh, imagine yourself one moment imagine yourself uh, in their position, uh, far, far from home, and stripped for days of, of nearly all, uh, stripped for days of, uh, stripped for days of nearly all uh, you had, of nearly all you had brought along. We may, uh, we may at least ask, uh, uh, though lamentably few seem to be asking, what cause is so undeniably just uh, that it uh, countenances a breach of this kind? against innocence of this kind. What was so endlessly occurring and needful inside this... Uh, inside the... Uh, yeah, fucker. Inside this... Uh, inside this motel room turned sarcophagus where only the dead resided. Was there a an aura of hazard stretching from many meters and for days outside the long subdued chamber? Uh, what deed, if any, had to be hidden or undone before the random civilians so gruffly expelled uh, could be allowed to even briefly visit their own rentals? The answer is not complex, and the waters uh, need not be muddied. The cause it was the endless, failed devastationism of this empire's war, not only upon drugs, but upon the bodies and even rooms which might contain them. Not only upon the users and merchants, but upon the random victims of state, who in some cases love their overlords and their shooting wars, but then find themselves in the wrong motel. If an intrusion upon the bystander is the minimum necessary stratagem to accomplish their safety, then let it be for their actual safety. <laughs> let, let, uh, uh, and, and, not, and not for the, uh, the at-best counterproductive warfare upon substance possession. Mm. Uh, uh, this debacle and in the mall of New ha <coughs> mall of New Hampshire and the alleged opioid emergency uh, it uh, it did not occur in an environment of of drug freedom it occurred uh, they occurred under the government's program of prohibition 
uh, and ought to be lain at its jack boots. Surely uh, there cannot be a crisis in banned substances, uh, for, uh, for banned substances have been banned. Perhaps we shall never know for certain precisely what happened to each of these dead. Only the official version of the tale. Uh, the Manchester uh, Free Stater, Mrs. Garrick, has, has called for an independent inquiry. Our governments uh, are, uh, are want to investigate themselves and determine they did nothing wrong. We may be grateful uh, that none of the adjoining bystanders were injured and that our enforcive foes whose human rights we still cherish were not struck. Meanwhile, the gadflies of the communication webs have been busy, industriously thumbing their savage expressions of contentment at the killings, lavishing their obsequiousness upon uh, the lethal monopolists who stole their money to do it, and would, uh, would do it to them uh, without question were they to offer similarly daring resistance against police ingress of even the most odious kind. Yeah. Mm, lamentable self within. More is to come. Winston will be back. Mm. He is coming. He is on his way. Mm, is a. Uh, Mm. Odious kind, the ingress of the most odious kind. Uh, but how long will it be, if it has not already happened, before your favored enforcing organizations and unaccountable killing devices are turned against uh, uh, your loved ones or neighbors? Uh, how long until they are turned against you? It is not primarily a crime problem which Manchester suffers, but a police, and possibly more significantly, uh, significantly in this case, a federal police problem. Now, whether by misguidance or fear, it is likely you, in constabulary forces, will continue to do your worst. But we shall do our best. The growing literally and prospering earth will not forever countenance your terminations of the flawed but not executable offenders you created then destroyed city hall keen in new hampshire may 21st 2000 and uh, 2019 <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. For all intents and objectives, there is no uh, municipality in this uneasy union which lacks a parasitical facility of this variety. Were such a locale to, uh, to exist in substantial form, we, uh, and were we as a people, uh, to know well its condition, we might find ourselves flocking to it. We might crave that we too could attain leave of such institutions. <clears throat> ah, bear with, bear with. Although there are many charming and courteous individuals within, who know well the, lis the wisdom of limits upon power, or believe they are loyally serving the people uh, they boss about. <clears throat> Much 
boss about my pages more efficiently. Mm. Uh, boss about, there are, uh, uh, these are, in the latter case, almost wholly mistaken. Uh, wasteful at their best, the predatory at their worst, these shrines of re religionistic flaggage and symbolism, of forbidden corridors and um, unicenary incantations, in fact, near every, perhaps fully every, a region of habitable ground upon the great blue sphere. Bloated with their lists of forbidden acts and sometimes even forbidden syllables. These prohibitionists numbering in the hundreds of thousands, these, these prohibitions number in the hundreds of thousands of pages. Here the results, here <laughs> the results have been no worse than might be apprehended in perhaps an Illinois or a New York town but they are markedly more restrictive than those inflicted on other segments of this chilly but partially emancipated shire. And it appears I have been emancipated from the sun, but only briefly. Now, <clears throat> ah, da, da, blah, da, lists, hundreds, pages zone in Illinois, New York, uh, silly, chilly particularly this, this, this chilly but partially uh, emancipated shire. Taxing as they do at a rate far beyond that of a New Hampshire municipality in the norm, capturing and subjecting to trial their very neighbors and sometimes even their loyal friends for purported crimes which were they to occur would improve, not diminish this place. Removing, uh, removing inside its borders the right of legal adults under 20 and 1 years to decide for themselves which nicotines to purchase or not purchase for their own bodies. The list of forbidden acts already over 200,000 pages long at the imperial level is ruinously longer still in Keene, New Hampshire. Mm. It, uh, it has provided uh, for aspiring business persons armed guidance on what they may use and not use uh, by way of names when titling their shops. It has interfered with vendors on a scale and with the fanaticism such that some of the same are afraid to even speak publicly of their treatment for fear that new inspectors or edicts will arrive against them. How crucial they must be are the imprisonments of persons which have occurred because they openly operated a video camera here or drank from water containing bottles of the wrong color there. One has even faced charges for entering this building. How fragile must be whatever is allegedly being protected from such a minor contraventions which scarcely even qualify as insults. Mm. Mm. Yeah, insults. A thousand pages, uh, even speak publicly, crucial, barely even uh, fragile. Uh, yeah, we could barely even qualify as, uh, as, uh, as insults. Search out these phrases and claims above on your device's browser if you disbelieve them. As they are in fact a truth stranger than fable. 
but our incredible list of this building's um, mm, our incredible list of this uh, mm, mm, Winston is uh, Winston is working on it Winston is working on it I do not wriggle uh, mm, devices are uh, do not necessarily how fragile must be the minor contraventions is an incredible list building oh yes our incredible our incredible list of this building's malignancies goes on although not necessarily without cause its forces have bulleted to death in this decade alone as many people as it took half the nation of Iceland its whole two century history to achieve its ministers have placed snipers on the very roof the very rooftops not in reaction to a pressing catastrophe but rather because holiday festival imagine the frightfulness they must have witnessed through their range-finding scopes it has dispatched gunmen from this same department to prevent the filming of public meetings government meetings and force the local TV station to delete its recordings of an arrest upon a public sidewalk and in around the building itself unharmful citizens of my own acquaintance have been subjected to injury at the hands of constables or the dragging of their bodies across fields of ice right there there was such a field and such a dragging and yet it uh, this, uh, this has been only the most partial of recountings to our shame we have not yet been potent enough to document every single abuse that has occurred here would that we could and splay each such disgrace before the world it is said, uh, said and well said that there will never be an earthly paradise uh, but we here have been told that we are uh, that we should uh, that we should indeed imagine perhaps we should imagine this a keen New Hampshire in which there is no monopoly authority in this building in which the halls and chambers long misused to quash commerce and issue threats are instead dedicated to productive commerce or charity woe uh, the hubricious perpetrators should a, an equitable or competitive justice system ever arise and adjudicate them the way they prayed against a legally near helpless citizenry for judicial rights and remedies are largely theoretical to the unwell, unwealthy in this empire to which keen so fanatically affixes the many harmless violations for which thousands of humans have been sequestered away here over the decades pale at the first instance when shown in equal lighting against the hardships this institution has inflicted it is important not to limit ourselves to the invocation of uh, grievances or the postulation of solutions far beyond our capacity to realize what matters is what can be done about this place today and what you can do today is not very much but it is this there are perhaps four organizations imperfect in nature uh, located in or dedicated to the liberation of this city from its shitty well, that simple thing you can do today is look them up 
And if you deem appropriate, perhaps begin affixing yourself to their struggle. Save Your Land Keen is a meetup group, recently active but lamentably small. ShireSociety.com in Keen runs what is perhaps the state's most active web forum. Although I may be easily missing some competitor. NHCalendar.org lists government questioning meetings in Keene and Freekeen.com Freekeen.com is a conglomeration of free state folk and their allies active not small but controversial Would that it were possible for me to list the less eyebrow-raising and once formidable Keen Taxpayers Association, as I believe it was called. But unhappily, this more elderly, elderly grouping appears to have succumbed to the ages. So there it is. Save your land, Keen. ShireSociety.com NHCalendar.org and Freekeen.com Freekeen.com uh, <clears throat> uh, For um, For those sniper teams and apparatchik functionaries who rule this zone of enhanced restrictions who, uh, who for a time may seem invincible but in the end always fall. This, as the former naval, naval person once put it, is uh, probably not the beginning of the end. But we can at least aspire that it may be the end of the beginning. What are you arresting this man for? You've seen the dramatic liberty arrests in Keene, New Hampshire. Now see 111 reasons why you should move there and reinforce these gutsy activists. Keen's advantages are compelling and the list of reasons to move has just been updated. For details visit freekeen.com